Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Good to see you today. I pray that you are blessed and uh, ready to receive what God has in store for us. You know, this has been a, a, a quite a busy last couple of weeks, you know, here at our center with graduations. And I know that those festivities for other schools are going on. You know, they happened, you know, last week, the week before, they're this weekend and next. And so there's a lot of that that's going on, and we want to just uh, celebrate with a lot of them uh, for, from our center and for those that may not have graduated from our center this year, but maybe from other schools. But we just want to say welcome. We're glad that you're here and that you've chosen to worship with us here today. And uh, Brother Orson, it's wonderful to see you. God bless. Happy Sabbath to you. Happy Sabbath, Pastor. All right, well, what we want to do is we not want to now give you the opportunity to shake the hand of the person sitting next to you. Welcome them, tell them happy Sabbath, and that you're glad to see them here today. Right. Well, we want to bring some things to your attention, and so want to draw your attention to the bulletin as well as to the screen. And uh, of course, we don't mention every single uh, announcement, but they're nonetheless all important. And so we want to make sure that we do highlight a few. And so why don't you go ahead and take it away? Okay. Just want to remind those that are in the children's department, from cradle roll to, I suppose, the youth, that they are having a seminar or, or a tutorial of some sort this afternoon at 1.30. So uh, talk to Esther Lida. I think she has sent out a reminder about that. But anyway, just to let everybody know, uh, 1.30 is the seminar that she's having at, at 1.30. And then we're having something else at uh, 8 o'clock tonight. Absolutely. And you know what? Now that you just mentioned the children, the, the, what's interesting is that you notice our announcements. Every single one of them has to do with children. Every single, you know, our center, we want to highlight our children. We, you know, we have our two schools that are just important ministries for, for our church. And, uh, of course, we just want to highlight our kids. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing is this evening, we start at 8 p.m., 8 p.m., for an all-night prayer vigil, especially for our children. This is something that is led by, by B. Uh, 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 Bezunish. And uh, we are so glad for her passion for, for prayer and for praying for her children. Let me tell you, she has been praying for years for her children. And she's got this, this, uh, this it, her heart goes out for her children. I know that many of you have those same sentiments and those same prayers for your own children. And so we're going to be doing an all-night prayer vigil here this evening, led by B. And so come and, and, and be a part of that. Uh, I know some of you might be thinking, well, I can't do all night. But you know what? I really want to pray for my kids. I want to pray for our, our center. I want to pray for our students. I want to pray for my grandchildren. I want to pray for my nieces, nephews. 
Come and be a part, even if it's just for an hour or two. We'd love to have you. And, uh, but we're going to be going all the way through to about, uh, I believe, 6 a.m. or so. So uh, come be a part, and we are, we'd be glad to, to see you there and uh, pray over these children. So uh, that's this evening beginning at 8 o'clock. Um, and then, of course, hey, next week we highlight the fathers, but you don't, you're not a father unless you have children, right? Well, you could have a pet. Uh, yeah, I guess you could have a pet. Um, and uh, I, I'm, looking, I'm looking out that way, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. So happy Father's Day to you coming up, <laughs> uh, Chaplain Joel. Uh, all right, but, um, what, and Victoria back there, yes. Yeah, so, yes, praise the Lord. Um, we want to uh, just let you know that we want to highlight our fathers uh, coming up, and that's next week. Father's Day is coming up next week. But um, we're also going to be having a Father's Day potluck. And so, you know what? Just prepare for that. And if you uh, plan on staying, please bring a dish and come and, and fellowship and just continue to uh, enjoy the Sabbath together. So that's next Sabbath uh, after the service. And then what's happening on Monday? <laughs> a week from this Monday. That's right. That's right. Um, you know, we've got Violet over here who's just been a fantastic leader for our Vacation Bible School. And that's coming up here uh, on the 17th and uh, I can tell you that there's been a lot of preparation a lot of planning that has gone into VBS and uh, and so you know what we're just so glad that we can do that not only for our center but also for our community and uh, Violet you were just telling me just the other day that uh, you know as a result of VBS we've had students go to to Foothill and, uh, you know, that's just an awesome thing that when we have community children coming to VBS and, uh, and then it ultimately leads them to come through to Foothill. Um, so an, an amazing thing, an amazing thing. So VBS, a very important vital ministry uh, uh, for our church here. But uh, as we are talking about VBS, we've been showing a promo video the last few weeks. We're going to show it this week and next week as well. So I'm going to have you go ahead and take it away. Are you ready to roar? Head out on an African adventure that engages the whole herd. Create a stampede of fun at Sing and Play Roar. Bring the Bible to life in wild Bible adventures. Experience jaw-dropping discoveries at Imagination Station. Run wild with high-energy activities at Stampede Sports. Discover what life is like for five amazing kids who live in Africa at Kid Vid Cinema. Get ready to let the good times roar! All right, so that's coming up on the 17th. And uh, so please be a part of that, come and support. If you are wondering where you might fit in uh, into the VBS uh, uh, each evening, then talk with Violet, and I know that she can direct you as to what you might be able to do. And, um, and I'll, I'll tell you, you know, there's a saying that says, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. And I can tell you, my kids scream for ice cream. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about that screaming. Okay, by the way, back on the VBS, um, what ages, age range does it cover? Uh, age ranges. All right, All right. Pre preschool to the senior citizens. Yes. That's right. All right. All right. So you are not too old for VBS. Isn't that great to be able to say that? I am not too old for VBS. You know what? Why don't we repeat that? I am not too old for VBS. All right. Excellent. And the cost is? Zero. All right. So All right. no reason not to come. Yes. So we talked about ice cream. I know the social committee is planning one on June the 29th. Uh, 
in the evening, I'm, I'm, I think, and normally they have a movie and food and snacks, so uh, that normally there is more ice cream than, than you can consume, and <laughs> there's even uh, vegan ice cream, so, you know. Um, that's right, that's right. That's there's, right, there's so we want to include everybody. Okay, right, so there's no excuse not to come, and you know, if you're a vegan, there is some for you, too. Absolutely. All right. Well, we, there's a matter of business that we do need to tend to, and you'll notice in your bulletin we have some transfers of membership. This is the second reading. You'll notice that there's incoming uh, William Kennedy. Uh, I'm not, I don't see William at the moment. I don't think he is here right now, but uh, you see him. He comes with his father, and, uh, and so if you haven't met William yet, make sure you take an opportunity to do that. He's coming from Campbell SDA Church, and then we've got outgoing Fernando, Lisa, Melissa Ramirez to Mountain View Central SDA Church. And so with that, is there a motion to accept those transfers? Their motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? There's a second. Uh, all those in favor say yes. yes. And he opposed no. And it is with sadness that we do see families leave, but we're always glad when we see families come in. And so praise the Lord for that. We are all part of the family of God. And whether they go to that church, this church, or whatever church, we are all family of God. Praise the Lord. All right, why don't you go ahead and lead us into worship. Okay, I'll call the worship. It's found in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Good morning and happy Sabbath day. Aren't we glad we're in God's presence today? Amen. How was your work week? I want to ask you. Can I share? Uh, my boss called me to her office and I quickly printed emails to like, defend myself and show her she was wrong. On the way, somehow the Spirit spoke to me and said, um, don't defend yourself, um, but go there with a peaceful heart. And I'm glad I listened to God's Spirit and the conflict was resolved and I'm here today happy. <laughs> Thank you. So I praise God for that. Um, our first song is about the Holy Spirit and that sweet spirit never abandons us, always walks with us through conflict. Sweet, sweet spirit. Shall we all stand up? Shall we stand as we see? There's a sweet, sweet. Father God, you are awesome, God. Thank you for walking with us each day and sending your Holy Spirit that never abandons us. Help us, Lord, to always hold your hand. And Lord, help our hearts to be opened always to your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 
Holy Spirit, rain down. This is a happy song, but every time we feel this period, it says, let's pray. I will pray. Let's sing this song with our hearts up high. <laughs>
we all be seated? And we're going to ask our children to bring their little baskets for our children's story hour. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Are we all up here now? Happy Sabbath, you guys. It's always a blessing to see all of you guys up here. Today, I'm going to start my story a little different. I'm going to start it with a really short song with help from a special friend of mine, okay? Oh, I already love Jesus. Oh, yes, I love Jesus. Are you sure you love Jesus? Sure, I love Jesus. And why do you love Jesus? Just so why I love Jesus. Cause he first began. <laughs> <laughs> Loved me. <laughs> okay, so love. I'm going to tell you a story about a girl named Katie. Oh boy, was she having a very bad day. Everything just seemed to be going wrong. First, she was late for school. Why didn't my mommy wake me up earlier? Second, because she was in such a hurry to get to school, she forgot her homework on her desk at home. Thankfully, her teacher did say it was okay for her to turn in her homework tomorrow, but uh, right? And let's not even talk about that soccer game where she tripped on someone's leg and then she fell and she skinned her knee so she couldn't play for the rest of the game. And then her team lost. I mean, the girl apologized and said, I'm sorry for accidentally tripping you, but still, I, she had to congratulate the winning team. Not fun at all, right? And then on her way, on her walk back home, Someone passed by on a bike and splashed mud all over her. Oh, come on, could this day get any worse? She thought as she stomped up into her house, up the stairs to her bedroom, except her bedroom door was open. And that only means one thing. Her little brother got in her room when she was gone, and he made a mess. Everything was scattered. Everywhere. Can you imagine that? When she saw her brother, she was so upset. She started yelling at him. She said, what were you doing in my room? 
You made a big mess. You weren't even supposed to be there in the first place. Meanwhile, her mom was in the other room listening to everything that was going on. And she already knew that Katie was having a pretty rough day. So she called Katie over and asked her to explain what was going on, what happened. So Katie told her everything. She said, well, I was late for school. You didn't wake me up earlier. And then I left my homework at home. And then I skinned my knee because I tripped over someone's leg during my soccer game which we lost, and someone on a bike splashed mud all over me. And then I come home, and Kevin went in my room, made a huge mess, and now I have to clean it up. And her mom said, you know, Katie, come over here, have a seat. And she went over, and she reached for her Bible. She opened it to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and her mom started reading. She said, love is not patient. It's very mean. It wants what everyone else has, and it's very arrogant. It's rude. It's easily angered. It thinks bad things about others, rejoices in sin, but never the truth, can't bear anything, doesn't believe much, and it endures nothing. Katie just looked at her mom a little confused. She said, Mom, uh, are you OK? I don't think you read that right. And her mom looked at her and she said, really, did I? And she said, hmm, because I'm pretty sure that's how love felt like in your heart today. You see, Katie, Jesus loved us since the very beginning. He loved us first, right? No matter who we were or what sort of day he was having. And he showed us his love exactly like how it is written in the Bible. Like this, with patience and kindness, with with, uh, without dishonoring others or being easily angered, always protecting and always trusting. I'm not saying that what your brother did was right, but yelling at your brother wasn't right either. Katie, I want you to always remember, no matter what happens, we should always react in love, just like how Jesus did, okay? Yes, mommy, said Katie, I'm sorry, and she gave Katie, a, her mom, a big hug. So I want all of you guys to remember, too, that whatever happens, you always have to react in love, OK? Would anyone like to pray? OK, I'll pray. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you so much for bringing all of us here to church today. And please always be in our hearts to help us react in love and be kind and patient to everyone around us. In your name we pray, amen. For those who are able, please kneel. Heavenly Father, thank you for this Sabbath, for the days to worship you. We thank you, Lord, for our health and keep us and keeping us safe. Please, Lord, please help all those who aren't here today and Please bless us in this good trip. And uh, please help everyone to be blessed with scripture today. And please help us to not get sick. And please help all the church members that are not here. And for whatever reason, then please keep them in your hands and help them fulfill. Please help us now, Lord, that she is needing our prayers. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
days we we first drawn four seven Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Happy Sabbath, church family. It's such a blessing for us to be able to worship with you this morning. And the song that we're going to sing is called Captivate Us. And um, I don't know what kind of situations you guys may be facing this week. I know for me in the past few months, it's been kind of the craziness of my first quarter of nursing school. Um, but this song has always reminded me um, that in the presence of Jesus, we can find um, transformation and we can find peace and hope for our souls, so I pray that um, you are blessed. For your yoke is easy, 
Your burden is light. You're full of wisdom, power, and mind. And every eye will see you. Captivate us, Lord Jesus. Set our eyes on you. Devastate us with your presence falling down. And rushing river, draw us nearer. And holy fountain, consume us with you. Captivate us, Lord Jesus, with you. You know, um, just to, to share with you how much of a treat that is, um, those are pastor's kids. And uh, we'll have Roldan come up here in just a, a bit afterwards. But um, we don't often get pastor's families coming through on Sabbath unless they're here to preach. And uh, so we want to thank you guys for being here. And um, it is truly a blessing and a privilege to have you here in our church and worshiping with us here today. Um, before, before I have, uh, you know, want to highlight our graduates and so on, I've got a question for, for you all. Um, and, and I want you to be completely honest, okay? We uh, are having, we are coming up upon a camp meeting in, a, in just, just a little bit over a, a month, okay? And uh, we as, as elders have been talking and worship committee and we've been talking as to what do we do for those two weeks when most of Central California is, uh, is up there in Soquel. And, um, and so typically what we've done over the course of the last uh, few years, at least since I've been here, is that we have made um, camp meeting available here. In other words, what we've done is we have... Uh, shown the broadcast of camp meeting here on Sabbath mornings for Sabbath school as well as the worship service. And, uh, and honestly, in, you know, I'm now in my 18th year of pastoring here in the Central California Conference. And so I have never, okay, as long as I've been a pastor, ever been in my church during camp meeting. I've always been up at camp meeting. So I don't know, honestly, a whole lot of what goes on here other than we show the broadcast and we have an elder leading out. And so um, it turns out over the course of the last couple of years that we've maybe had a handful of people. And when we talk about a handful of people that are here on a Sabbath while camp meeting is going on, we're talking maybe around my understanding is about 15 people or so. Okay. Now, hey, even if it's two people, one person... That, that has a desire to come and worship, you know, we'll, we'll make it available. But I will tell you right now that we are at this point leaning towards closing down Milpitas for those two Sabbaths, which is July 13 and July 20. Now, there are other churches that are closing down as they normally do during camp meeting, and there are other churches that do open up and show the broadcast. Now, I know most of uh, Milpitas were supporters of Central California Conference and, and SoCal Camp Meeting, and I know a lot of you end up up there at SoCal Camp Meeting. So I want to ask the question, okay, because we don't want to make a decision before we have some, some uh, understanding of what the desires are for a church. And that is, if we were to open up the church, um, um, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask it this way. How many of you would prefer that we open up the church so that we make camp meeting available? Now, I also want to say this. 
is that camp meeting, the way that they are doing camp meeting uh, over the course of the last several years is that they have made it much more available to everybody else. And what I mean by that is that it's not just solely on uh, the Hope Church channel, but it is also online. It's through Facebook. It's through various different avenues that we're actually broadcasting. And so that means that people can broadcast over their phones, on their televisions, on their computers, in the privacy of their homes. And, uh, and so it's been made available in that way. So I want to ask the question, how many of you, if we open up the church, would prefer, or let me, I keep changing around my question. How many of you would prefer that we open up the church and made it available so that people could come and, and, and I'm talking about you. We want to make it accommodations for you. How many of you would, would be here on Sabbath uh, for camp meeting? We have one, two, three, four. Okay, there's a few more hands going up. All right, so there's some, some desire for, for, a, uh, for opening up the church and so on, and that's something that we'll definitely take into consideration. We haven't made a decision yet. Uh, we, like I said, we have opened up over the course of the last few years, um, and uh, we will continue to do so if there's a desire for that. Uh, but if not, then we may end up just shutting down. But it seems like maybe there might be some, some desire for, for opening up the church. We'll revisit this here uh, over the course of the next several weeks, and then we'll let you know what we do decide. Um, as I mentioned, I, um, and if we do decide to, to shut down, we will also make sure that we do communicate if there are uh, area churches uh, nearby that uh, are showing the broadcast. With that, I want to um, just take the opportunity to highlight, especially at this time of year, our graduates. You know, there are, there are people, um, you know, well, let me put it this way, that we, in, most of us, many of us, are touched in some way by a graduate, or we know a graduate. We are families of graduates. We, uh, you know, maybe parents or, or grandparents, nep- uh, friends, uh, uncles, aunts, whatever. Um, this time of year, there's graduations happening all the way from preschool to post-grad and, and, and so on and so forth. And um, what we do here at the Milpita Seventh-day Adventist Church, because we do have D-Land graduations, we have Foothill graduations, we have a total of three graduations with Discovery Land, Kindergarten, and Eighth Grade. Um, and a lot of them are part of our church family. Uh, we also, we also uh, are supporters of uh, Monterey Bay Academy as well as Mountain View Academy, PUC, La Sierra. And uh, not just that, but we also have those that have graduated in terms of p- uh, public schools, whether it be elementary, middle school, or high school, uh, college, um, any type of university, um, whatever it might be. If you have graduated, Okay, this year or are graduating this year, um, you know, I'm not including myself on this, but I want to tell you, I'm graduating this year. I don't know how many of you all realize that. I'm graduating this year. I graduate in December. Thank you for the amen, sister. I appreciate that. I got one supporter. That's awesome. <laughs> this, has been, this has been a journey of, of about four years uh, for me, and uh, yeah, I'm graduating with a master's this year. So. Uh, very pleased with that. So um, I'm not going to include myself with all the gifts, okay? So just, just so you guys know. But anyways, I do want to invite our graduates, and I do see some out right now. And I want to invite you to come forward. Abraham, I see you. Um, Brandon, anybody else? Uh, oh, Patrick, yes, absolutely. Uh, come forward. Anybody else graduate? Makias, awesome. Um, anybody else, please, I want you to come forward. Don't, don't miss out. We want to pray, have a special prayer of blessing on you. We want to, um, you guys, you guys graduate, come forward. We want to pray a blessing upon you guys as well, graduating from uh, Monterey Bay Academy. Praise the Lord for that. Um, anyone else, Discovery Land, preschool, kindergarten, um, eighth grade, senior high school, uh, college, please come forward. We don't want to miss out on anybody. Honestly, we want to invite you to come forward. But here we've got some, some graduates, and uh, we've got Monterey Bay Academy represented. We've got uh, uh, Foothill represented. Praise the Lord for these guys. You know, they, they, 
they have, uh, a, a, you know, we talk about achievement and we talk about reaching these, these levels, you know, where you've worked so hard, you know, to get to those points in your life. And, and honestly, for, for you guys, and, you know, uh, we often think of graduation as being kind of the end. But you know what? It's just the beginning of another chapter for you guys. And, you know, I'm not sure what you guys have planned, any one of you guys, really. But, you know, what we want to do is ultimately put you in the hands of the Lord. What we want to do is have that blessing upon you that whatever decisions and whatever choices that you guys make, that uh, whatever path it is that you are on, that ultimately it has God's blessing upon it and that He is the one that is ultimately leading you there. And so what we want to do is we want to just have a, have a prayer. Oh, we got another graduation. Yes, come forward, please. We've got a special gift for you. Mom, if you want to come up with her, bring her up. You're welcome to come up as well. Yeah. Okay, I'll bring, if, yeah, come up, come up. Yes, please, I want to see you. <laughs> if not, it's okay. Okay, you got her. All right, I, I, I'll bring her, I'll bring her a, a gift as well. Very good, very good. She graduated from d -Land this year. All right, very good, very good. All right. Are you graduating too? Did you graduate? Come on up. Come on up. Look at that smile. Awesome. Awesome. Excellent. Oh. All right. Well, what we want to do is we want to pray over you guys. And uh, so why don't we bow our heads and let's, let's present them before the Lord. Father God, I want to thank you so much because you are an amazing God. And what you have done, Lord, is continue to lead us and guide us. Lord, Scripture says that you have known us even before we were born that you have fashioned us, that you, that you uh, 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 put us together. And, and God, and here we are today. And I know that from the beginning of time and even before time, that God, you saw this moment when these people, when these young people would graduate and reach this pinnacle of their, of their educational experience. But Lord, what we want to do is we want to just present them to you just now because we know that it's ultimately not the end, but it's the beginning of another chapter in their lives. And what we want to do is we want to place them in your care and in your hands. Place them on a road, oh God, that you have set for them. And that you, Lord, would ultimately lead them ultimately into the kingdom. Father, we know that this world offers so much and uh, by way of, of power and money and wealth and, and success and so on. But God, those things are not ultimately as important as eternal life and salvation. And what we want, oh God, is to ensure that they are in your hands and that you, God, would hold them, embrace them, and not let them go. The enemy is working hard to try to snatch them out of your hands, but I pray, God, that you will hold them firm and secure. And so, God, right now, we just trust that as we have placed them in your hands, that whatever comes their way, whatever obstacle they run into, that, God, you will lead them through it, you will lead them around it, you will lead them over it, under it, however it might be that you, God, would lead them out to their ultimate end. And so, Lord, we thank you for the experiences that we've had with them thus far, but we look forward to how you're going to continue to use them and transform them and, and utilize them as instruments and as children of God. And so, God, we thank you and ask that hand of blessing will be upon them from this day forward. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, on behalf of the, of the Milpitas Seventh-day Adventist Church, what we want to do is we want to give you just a gift, a card, and uh, just a, a congratulations to you guys for, for graduating and for reaching this point in your lives. And uh, we just praise the Lord for you and look forward to how God is going to continue to lead you guys. And uh, so you know what? Go with God. Keep Him number one in your life. And uh, I'm just looking forward to how God is going to continue to use you guys. All right, God bless. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. And that's for you. All right. Why don't we uh, bow our heads one more time. Father God, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to open up your word just now. 
And Father God, what we want to do is we want to highlight Jesus. And I pray that you would give me the words to ultimately paint the picture of the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, I seek your Holy Spirit to move in me. Use me as your instrument, but move in each heart here just now. May he be our teacher, and may he guide us into all truth. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I got to tell you honestly that I struggled with this message. I I really did. Um, Because I had this... When, when, when I set out to, to prepare this message, what I had ultimately set out to do was try to paint a picture of the love of Jesus Christ. Um, and, and there's a purpose for this, because this is going to be a two-part message from this week and next week, um, and especially within the context of our tree here. And... <clears throat> And I thought about this a little bit more and more, and I just thought, you know what? I don't know that I can put the words together that can ultimately display this picture of Jesus. I think I had shared this before, and um, so forgive me, and, and there might be parts of this message that, that uh, might sound familiar to you as, as there are parts that I'm taking from other presentations and sermons that I've done and, and, and so on, because I, I really want this to come across. But there, is a, uh, there was a, a few years ago when Melanie and I ended up going to Hawaii, okay? And we were in Hawaii, and um, we were... We were, I believe, we went to two islands. We went to Maui and then we went to, to Oahu. Uh, and then at, and on this particular trip. And what we had done, I think it was on both islands, but I think mostly on Oahu, where we had seen this, we were walking and we saw this gallery, okay? This gallery of, of, of art, artwork, okay? And, and you know what, we typically, you know, we, yeah, we love art, but we're not enthusiasts or anything like that. And, and it's not that we, uh, you know, walk into galleries or anything on a, on, 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 a, on a regular basis. We don't do that. But this one particularly caught our attention because what was fascinating about this particular artist was the way that he painted. And, and he, what his scenes were is they were, these were these idealistic scenes of, of the ocean, okay, and, and sea life. And, and it was so fascinating looking at these paintings because um, he would picture dolphins, let's say, swimming underwater, and, and, and he would capture, what was fascinating about, about these paintings is that this artist would capture the light that would shine through uh, the water and and it would reflect okay off of the water or off of the dolphins and and when you look at these paintings it looked as though there was light coming from the the, the painting and and it was the, the scene was uh, with all of these paintings that he had done was as though that you could turn off the light in that that gallery and it would still shine bright through those paintings when the reality is, is that no, that's not, that was, there was no light in them. But it was just really neat. And so, um, you know, we walked, we came out of that gallery and, you know, we just so amazed at, at his paintings. And then we came and, and continued walking down and, and uh, at, at several stops in several places, we saw these familiar paintings. Okay, they looked, you know, as though he was the one that had drawn. And sure enough, um, you could see at the bottom, he was the one that had drawn them. And, and uh, by the way, his name is Christian Reese Lassen. Okay, that's his name, Christian Reese Lassen. And, uh, and so I'll never forget these, these paintings, such beautiful uh, paintings. And then I think about, about the explanation of these paintings. Okay, so I would almost venture to guess, okay, at least I would think, this is probably what I would do, 
is that you hear the artist's name, and what you're going to do is you're going to get on Google, and you're going to look up his name, and you're going to look at his artwork. Okay, right? So here's the, here's the thing. Here's the reality. The reality is, is I can talk up a picture. I can, I can give these words, these descriptor words, these adjectives that will try to paint this picture in your minds, but it is nothing like actually seeing the real thing. Are you following me? And, and so what it has done is simply raised a curiosity in your minds. Now, I'm sure you have a, a similar experience where, where um, you know, you know what, what, what inside jokes are, right? What inside jokes are. And, and there might be times when, when you're, you know, you might be with a group of people and, and all of a sudden there might be two of them that starts laughing and, and so on. Everybody's looking at them and, you know, why are you laughing? And what do they respond? It's, oh, you just had to be there. They might even explain why they're laughing and to you it's really not that funny you really had to be there you know what i'm talking about right and so and so as i think about this i think about our relationship with jesus christ and trying to paint the picture if you will of god's love and what I can do is I can put all of these words and these descriptors and so on. And, and I might even be, be passionate about, about what I say. But the thing is, brothers and sisters, is that you will not come into an experience with his love unless you experience it for yourself. And, and, and again, I don't, I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, because the reality is, is I can talk about Jesus, but hopefully what it does is it, it, it creates a curiosity in you that what it does is it takes you back to the Word of God to read it, to, to, to study it, to learn for yourself, to experience for yourself, because if I've experienced it that way, then you know what? I want to have that experience uh, that way as well. So how do I do that? Well, let's return to the Word. Let's look at the Word. Let's, let's study. Let's get deeper. Let, let's, let's discover. <clears throat> this is what makes, at least for me, in the preparations of this message, so difficult to try to paint the picture of God's love. And you know what the reality is? The reality is, is that as much as I might talk up God's love, and as much as I might talk up and, and try to paint that picture of what it's like and what it is and so on, the reality is, is that I don't even fully understand it. I don't fully comprehend it. It would almost be like me taking a canvas up here and trying to reproduce what Christian Reese Lassen did in those paintings. And you might see my painting and you might think to yourself, really? That's... That's what, what, what he painted? That's what, you know, and you'd have these faces, right? You know, okay, good job, pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. But you see, I have no talent in that way. I have no gift for painting. I have no gift for drawing in that way. And so therefore, you would have to experience it for yourself. I can't paint an effective picture of what that reality is like. You've got to experience it for yourself. That's what it is. And brothers and sisters, this is what Christianity is about. Christianity is not about me standing up here talking about what Jesus has done for me or what I've discovered about Jesus and you thinking to yourself, oh, that was a great sermon. That's not the Christian experience. 
The Christian experience is you having a, an experience with Jesus Christ. You falling in love with Him. You understanding what, what, what it means to be a child of God. To go and share that passion and that love with somebody else. That they too might come and experience Him for Himself. For themselves. That's what the Christian experience is, brothers and sisters. And so therefore, what we have to do is stop becoming a people of explanations. Stop becoming a people of trying to paint word pictures. What we've got to do is become an experiential people. Because there is nothing like the experience. There is an amazing piece of art done by a Korean artist. Yeah, another piece of art. And honestly, if you guys want to see the picture, I've got um, pictures of, of, uh, of the picture. As a matter of fact, I've got a, a, a poster of it because uh, I've used it to show, you know, as I, as I uh, you know, share this illustration. But there is a piece of, 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 of art, and it's done by this Korean artist. And it, this is quite unique. And I'm sure you've probably seen maybe similar types of art. But um, what's interesting about this piece of art is that it, it took him two years to create it, okay? It took him two years to, cre to complete that, scr that scroll. And what the artist did is he meticulously drew the picture by hand with a very fine-tipped pen. Now, this is not a painting, okay? But it is a picture created by writing thousands of words with shaded letters, okay? It is actually the entire New Testament written out by hand. And there are about 185,000 words on the scroll with an average of 1,000 words per line. The letters, they are drawn some thick, some thin, so that they bring out the picture of Christ. It's amazing what the words do, right? Now, in this picture, there are 27 angels surrounding Christ and looking to Him. And these 27 angels represent the 27 books of the New Testament. Now, the original work of art is actually uh, six feet long and four feet wide. Okay, so you can imagine it's a, it's a large piece of, of work. Now, what we have to understand is that Christ is not imposed upon the words. Okay, the words reveal the picture of Christ as they are inked light and dark to bring out the portrait of Christ. The words, you can say, have become flesh, a person. If you would magnify a portion of the work, and if you were to look at this and magnify it, you know, such as Christ's hand or, or some other piece of, of, of the artwork, you could actually read the words. And the message of this artist is that the New Testament reveals one thing, and that is the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I'm going to go a little bit further because I'm going to say that the Old Testament does so too. But you see, out of the Word... And when I say out of the word, I, I mean out of the Bible. Out of the word arises the word. Amen? Out of the word arises the word. Jesus Christ, the word which became flesh. As E. Stanley Jones writes, out of the gospels arises the gospel. You see, Jesus is the gospel. That's what he is. You know, and oftentimes we say, well, uh, when we try to describe what the gospel is, what we say is, well, the gospel is good news, right? Well, that's the definition of what that word is. Definition is good news. But you see, the gospel is not necessarily words. The gospel is not necessarily a message. The gospel is the message. The gospel is a person, Jesus Christ, who is the message you see. 
And so therefore, when we, we, when we talk about the gospel, Jesus is the gospel. The gospel lies in his person. He did not come to bring good news. He was the good news. Someone once wrote, a great wind blew through the Bible, and lo, it stood up a man. Some of the most important words in the entire Bible are these, found in John chapter 1, verse 14. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Incredible, incredible words. And you see, brothers and sisters, what I want to do is I want to paint this picture of Jesus and his love through the experience of God's plan of salvation. And, and, and let me take it back even a little bit further because the plan of salvation, ultimately, think about this. The plan of salvation is not put into effect until man sins. Do you, you realize this? The plan of salvation is put into effect once man sins. Because again, when you think about this, there is no need for salvation if man does not sin, right? There is no need for saving. So therefore, the plan of salvation put into effect once man sins. But what we have to understand is that even before the plan of salvation is put into effect, there was an original plan. And that original plan begins in Genesis chapter 1. And actually, and when I talk about within the context of the Bible, it actually began before that. Now, when we think about the original plan, we go back to the book of Genesis. Go with me to the book of Genesis. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I've been, I've been pastoring since, uh, or for 18 years now, going on 18 years, or I'm in my 18th year. Um, I've actually been preaching since I was 17. So I've written a lot of sermons, um, a lot of sermons. And, uh, and what's interesting is that very rarely do I ever preach a message, um, or, or, or let me say, if there's a text that I, that I, that I do a message off of, um, that very rarely am I going to preach a different message out of that same text. Now, I've done it before, okay, I've done it before, but it's rare that I do that. Now. The reason I say this is because of the book of Genesis. Okay, Genesis chapter 1 and 2 especially. Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. If there is any portion of scripture that I have developed more messages, more sermons, more studies from, it comes from Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. Um, it's amazing what is found in Genesis chapter 1, chapters 1 and 2. Um, and then, of course, moving into chapter 3. What we find is God's original plan for mankind. God, what he originally intended is found in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. And here what we find is, you know, beginning in verse, verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God made man, or created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Now, there is a thought that often is, is uh, brought up, especially amongst theologians and scholars and, and even skeptics of, of, the, of the Bible, of Christianity, of God, and, uh, and, and especially of creation. And that is that if the Bible teaches and that, that we understand that God is omniscient, meaning God is all-knowing, why then, if he would know that man would rebel, if he would know that man would turn their backs upon him, why would he then create us? 
Now, maybe we've even asked that question before, right? Why would he create us? Why would he, he put us through this or allow us to go through this, I should say? Why would then he subject himself to, to the, 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 the uh, instruments and the vileness, if you will, of sinful mankind and that God would just be put into their hands ultimately to suffer, to shed his blood, to ultimately die. Why would he do that? And we think to ourselves, you know what? We, 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 we've done this before. If I were God, right? We've done that before. If I were God, I would never have done that. I would have done it this way. We think as though we know better, right? But you see, we often do that. And, and, and ultimately, what we have to do is reduce God's purpose, God's motive for creating you and me to down to his very nature. And this is why. Thank you, Ray, for sharing the, the, the scripture reading earlier. Thank you, Brandon, as well, for the prayer. Um, so glad to see my nephews participating in the worship service here today. But uh, Rafe shared that scripture message and did a wonderful job in sharing 1 John 4, 7 and 8. And it says, Beloved, let us love one another. Now I want you to notice a progression of this text. Let us love one another, for love is of God. Now that word of is an interesting word. Because we can look at it, we can look at it that, that God is the source of love, which yes, He is. But then we can also look at it as, as God, it, God um, that love comes and emanates from Him. And so in the same way, that is also true. Okay, so love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So in other words, if you've got a relationship with Him, you know God, that means that you have love too. That's what the text is saying. But then it goes on. He that loveth not... Knoweth not God. Now, now, now think about this. So in other words, when you have a relationship with God, and when you know Him, you have, let me put it back to what we were talking about before, when you have an experience with Him, right? So when you have an experience with Him, then you can understand or appreciate, let me say, what His love is. And therefore, that love is passed to you. And therefore, you can then love one another. But if you do not know God, in other words, you do not have a relationship with Him, then that means you possibly cannot understand what His love is about. And therefore, how is it then that you can partake of that love? And then how is it then that you can share it with others? You cannot. And then it goes on and finishes. For God is love his very nature is love and, and, and I, I want you to think about because this this is something that I just simply cannot fully understand and comprehend but when you look at scripture and it's and it tells me in chapter 2 actually we're gonna get to it here in just a moment I'll tell you what that is but I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself in chapter 2, so we, we, we see here, God makes man. Let us make man in our image. Then in chapter 2, we find in verse 7. And it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. We're going to come back to this next week. Okay, we're going to come back to Genesis next week. But uh, we're going to see some very fascinating, some interesting things. But one thing that I want to pull from, from the text here to, just now is that in chapter 1, everything about creation, God spoke it into existence, right? He spoke. Let there be this, let there be that, and there it was. But when it came to mankind, which, which he created mankind on the sixth day of creation... He didn't just speak man into existence. He actually got down on his hands and knees, if you will. 
and he formed man. There was something special about this part of creation that God would pay special attention to mankind. And you see, it wasn't just, and, and, and look, I, I speak in all humanity, okay? Please understand that. And not to degrade what God has done at all, but this is just simply, I don't have any better words. But you might look at this and say, the first part of creation, the first uh, uh, five days of creation, well, God just spoke it into existence and there it was. Almost as though it was a passing thing. Now, not that it was. But here on the six, he stops, he pauses, and he pays special close attention to mankind and the formation of mankind. He would make sure that the details are put in place specifically with his hands, not just speaking it into existence. You know, and I don't even want to think. I, I don't know what it was like because, hey, I wasn't there. But you might think, and th this is the way that I would, I would perhaps picture the scene. And that is that God could very well have been even more in touch with that dirt, with that clay, with that, f uh, uh, um, with that form that was there that he had made that was laying in front of him. Because it says he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Which I'm saying he could have been more intimate with that form. When we think about, let's say, CPR, and you know what we do with CPR? We refer to it in other ways, right? We refer to it as mouth to mouth. And I would like to think that God would have become even more intimate with us in the giving us of life by putting us mouth to mouth. Amen. Think about this picture. That's intimate. And you see, what we're seeing here, what is on display, is yes, we might say God's creative power, but you realize that truly what is on display is God's love for you and for me. He loved us so much. And this is why he would ultimately create us. Because he is love. And think about this. You know, as, as, as a couple, you know, a, a, a newly married couple, perhaps, you know, there, there's a lot of, of things that, that discussions and conversations that they have. But there comes a point in many relationships, in many uh, 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 marriages between a husband and wife, where they come to a point where they want to say, you know what? We want to show and demonstrate our love for each other. Now, let me ask you this question. How do they show and demonstrate their love for each other to the world? How do they do it? Oh, sure, getting married. But you know what? Hey, I got married. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> I, I dug myself into a hole here. <laughs> 17 years. <laughs> I drew a blank there for just a moment. Wow. All right. <laughs> I got married 17 years ago. What is my demonstration today? It's my children. You. <laughs> and where's my other one? I don't even see her. Where is she? Oh, that's right. Boy, I'm having a hard time here this morning. That's the demonstration of our love right there before the world. We came to a point, we are ready. We wanna, th this is now a product of our love together. That's what children are, you see. And you see, I think about this, that, that God, before man was created, that he loved mankind. And he's, he's talking amongst the Godhead and he says, we got to make man. We got to make man. 
And we're going to make man in our image to look just like us. And, and here's the thing. This is what happens with our children, right? You know, I, I remember when Eliana was born. When Eliana was born, it was, it was amazing. Everybody, it didn't matter who it was. Everybody came across Eliana and came across me. They said, whoa, she looks just like you. I remember somebody telling Melanie, uh, actually, no, they told me about Melanie. And, he, and she, she looked at Eliana when she was just a baby. And, he says, and she looked with just utter shock and awe. And she says, you didn't even give your wife a chance, she says. <laughs> She looks so much like me. And, and it's amazing because then you put my baby pictures up next to our kids' baby pictures. And they're like, whoa, they're, this is amazing. They, you know, we're, we're splitting, spitting images. This is what God is doing. And, he, and what he is saying is, I'm creating man in my image to look like me. This is my love. This is, what's, this is what's on display right now. Is my love for you. And even before man is even created, he loves. To the point where he says, I don't want to continue existing without you. An amazing concept. An amazing thought. And so he creates us. But here's something fascinating. And what is fascinating is that God puts man to the test. And in verses 16 and 17 of chapter 2, it says that God would place within the garden a tree. And let's look at it there. Chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And it says, And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die now as we consider this we think to ourselves and you know what this deserves more unpacking but we don't have the time to unpack it here today but the unpacking is one where, where we ask the question, why would God put man to the test? And, and here's the, the short answer of it. Love is a choice. Love is a choice. And we have to choose to love him or not. That's what it comes down to. We have to choose to love him or not. Now, here's the fascinating thing. And this is what, where, where, where we begin to diverge from Jesus. Okay? In, in, in terms of our makeup and his makeup. And that is, love for us is a choice. You know, you, you've heard it said, well, God, God cannot force anyone right God cannot force us to love so he gives us the power of of choice to accept or either reject but what's fascinating is that when we look at first John chapter 4 and verse 8 when it says God is love you realize that for God it is not a choice it is not a choice for God which means that he cannot help but love. That's so amazing. And this is why you have texts like Romans. Go with me to Romans. Romans chapter 8. And notice verse, verse 37. And it says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now notice, For I am persuaded 
that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us. Why? It doesn't matter what you have done in your past. It doesn't matter how good you have been. It doesn't matter how bad you have been. It doesn't matter whether you have accepted him or whether you have rejected him. It doesn't matter whether you come to him or you walk away. It does not matter. God loves you because he cannot help but love you. For me, it's a choice. And because of that, that power that I have, when I place myself into the position of God, when I say, if I were God, I would not have done that. God cannot help but do that because he is love, you see. That's, what, that, that's where we separate here. That's why we are so much lesser than God. Because God is love. You cannot say that about mankind. But something happened. Unfortunately, mankind chose to disobey. And as a result of partaking of that fruit that God had commanded them to stay away from, the world was now plunged into sin. And you see, this is the picture that I often paint, and I love to tell it because this is my picture of what that love and what that creation is. I think to myself, and I imagine to myself, what it must have been like when Adam first opened up his eyes. When he first sees God. I imagine to myself what it must have been like to see. Because I believe that Adam saw the process of creating Eve. When she first came to, 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 to be. What were his thoughts? What was his facial expression? You know, I often think about, uh, about gifts. You know, I have such a problem with, with gifts, gift giving. I have a problem with, with giving gifts to my wife. I've got problems with giving gifts to my children. You know, I can never wait till it's birthday time, or I can never wait until it's Christmas time. Because when I buy a gift or whatever, I want to give that gift a lot sooner. Because I, the, the anticipation is killing me as to what is their reaction going to be? What is their, you know, and when you give that gift, think about this. This is what we do. When we give a gift, something that we bought, something that we took special attention and, and maybe spent a lot of money on or, or w that we created with our own hands, whatever it might be, and we give it to somebody, what we do is we don't look at the gift. What we do is we look at the person when we give it to them and we keep our eyes on them. And when they open it, what is, their face, what is their facial expression? And when you see the eyes wide open, their mouth open, you know, you hear that, that breath. <gasps> that makes you feel good, doesn't it? Oh boy, gift giving is so much fun. And you know what? I can imagine that this is what God is doing. That when Adam and Eve open up their eyes and he's just looking at their faces and, 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 and he sees them and it just... And then, and then God be, is getting excited. I got to imagine, you know, God gets excited. Do you realize that? I, I, I believe God gets excited. As a matter of fact, there's a text in Scripture that tells us that, that, that He rejoices over us with singing. <laughs> he rejoices over us with singing. He gets excited. He rejoices. He, he loves and you see, when he sees that facial expression on Adam and Eve, and I can imagine, he says, you know what? You haven't seen anything yet. 
He says, come here, come here. And perhaps he takes them to some vista, to some point where he can, you know, see this view. I don't know. Maybe it's a waterfall. Maybe it's a, a valley. Maybe whatever it might be. Check this out. Adam, I created this just for you. You know what? When you wake up in the morning, I thought, you know what? This would be a great time to commune with me, to just clear your head and just, you know what? Just look at that sunrise and, and just enjoy what I have created for you. And, 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 and I'm sure that Adam is looking out there and he's just, wow. And, and, and Eve, Eve, come, come. And as they're walking, I'm sure that they're walking through the blades of grass and how it just, just cushions their feet and how good it feels. And, 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 and he says, come here, look. And he picks up a flower and, and he says, Eve, smell that. <sighs> look, look, Adam, this fruit here, I, 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 want, to, I want you to taste this. And then now taste this one. You see how they're different, but yet they're both so delicious and so good. Oh, I can't decide which one is my favorite. Well, try them all. I created them just for you. I can imagine the love of God is just expressed in such a, 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 a great way there in the, in the Garden of Eden. And to think that there comes a point when they turn their backs upon him. And I'm sure that when they then take that fruit and partake of it, immediately it says that they knew that they were naked. Something was off. Something is missing. And then we have the whole experience of, 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 of the serpent and, and, and God coming into the garden. And, 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 you know, the first picture of God that we have after the fall of man, you know what that is? We have him and saying, Adam, where are you? The first picture of God after the fall of man is God in search of a sinner. Amen. That's love. That is love. And it comes to a point where God must expel them from the garden. And I think to myself what that must have been like. And I'm sure that their minds are being recalled back to that moment when they first saw God, when they first saw these scenes, when they first saw all of this in the Garden of Eden, what God had created and done for them, the excitement that he had now versus the sadness of now having to expel them. And I can imagine that they're leaving the Garden of Eden. And you see, there's a difference now because you see, when they walked they were always walking with God in the garden. It was Adam, Eve, and God. And they're walking together, and, or, or it was always them walking towards God, perhaps. And this is how I imagine, because God created them to enjoy this face-to-face -face relationship and enjoy this, this, this uh, 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 enjoy the singing together and talking together and, and embracing one another and, and just learning and, and, and so on. And I can imagine this face-to-face -face experience that they had that it was always, once again, Adam and Eve and God walking together. But you see, now this walk, as they're expelled from the garden, is different. Because you see, now they're walking and it's just Adam and Eve. And instead of walking towards God, what they do is they look back and they see God getting further and further away. And I can imagine the thoughts, the feelings that are going on inside of, of Adam and Eve and thinking to themselves, oh, could have only, if we could only take back what we just did. If we could only, if we could only just go back, turn back the clock. And looking back with tears and perhaps sadness. That was God's original plan. That man and God commune together. That's what his plan was. But you see now, plans change. And I think that this is a hard concept for for Lucas to understand and learn, isn't it, Lucas? You know, 
He will take you at your word. Lucas will. And so if I say, I promise that tomorrow we're going to the park. Oh, he remembers that. But you see, something happens between now and then. Let's suppose that it begins to rain. And you know what? A torrential downpour. Yesterday I said we're going to be able to go to the park. But today it's raining. So what does that do? That means plans must change. But you see, that's a hard concept for Lucas to grasp. It doesn't matter whether it's rain or shine. It doesn't matter whether it's in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day. You promised. You promised. You said we were going to go to the park. But Lucas, it's raining. We can't go. But you promised. You said we would. Plans. Unfortunately, at times, change. And for God and mankind, God's original plan had to change. And so he goes from plan A to now plan B. And you know what plan B is? Plan B is found in Exodus chapter 25. Go with me there. I, am, I feel like I am getting too descriptive. Which means I am nowhere near where I thought I would end up by this time. Which means that this might be a three-part sermon. But in Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8, it says, And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them. Amen. This is plan B. You realize that? God's original plan was a face-to-face -face relationship. God's original plan was to, to walk hand-in-hand, side-by-side, God's original plan was for us to, to hear each other's voice, to talk back and forth. That's what God's original plan was. But now that sin entered into the world, things changed. Plans changed. And now, you see, that face-to-face -face relationship is now ended. And you see... We're going to unpack this starting next week a little bit more as we get into the sanctuary. But you see, as Jesus followed through with plan B, in the sanctuary illustration, the sanctuary model, mankind was still to experience and to see God's love. You see, that sanctuary experience pointed them forward to where now another demonstration of His love would take place. And that is upon the cross. But you see, we might say, well, the cross, we might say is that one of the greatest demonstrations of His love and you know what, I would probably tend to disagree with that. <coughs> I would probably say that the greatest, what, what the cross does is it shows the greatest depravity of our sin. And yes, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But you see, by the simple fact I hate that word for this phrase that I'm about to say because it's not a simple thing. By the simple fact that God created you and created me 
because of love, I believe is one of the greatest demonstrations of his love for us. We were created in his image. And that's where we're going to take this next week. I want to share something with you. How many of you know a singer by the name of Dallas Holm? Anybody know Dallas Holm? Dallas Holm. Dallas Holm. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes I ask this question, how many of you know who Dallas Holm is? There's a lot of people who don't know who Dallas Holm is. But it's amazing that a lot of people will recognize his songs. He has written hundreds of songs. And some of the most well-known songs that, that, that are out there um, are written by Dallas Holm. And uh, um, I don't know how many of you ever heard the song, Yes, I'll rise again. Ain't no power on earth can tie me down. That's Dallas Holm. That's his song. Um, and, you know, we might think of him more in the 70s and 80s and, and 90s. He's still singing today. And as a matter of fact, I had the, the privilege of meeting him a couple of years ago. <clears throat> and, um, and so he came to, to my church in Turlock. And so um, he, he came and he was going to do a concert. And so I was able to spend some time with him, he and his wife, before his concert, you know, just he and I. And, and I told him, I said, look, and this happened when, I first, when he first came to the church. And I said, um, I, I want to I wanna, I wanna sing a song for you. And I didn't tell him what it was or, or, or whatever. But, um, and I kept saying that. So finally, I got the opportunity. And I remember he and his wife sitting right here, sitting right here, okay, in my other church. Okay? And the piano just in a very similar position right here. So I got on the piano and I started and I started singing a song. Okay. And it was his song. Okay, that's why I wanted to share it with him. I wanted to sing it to him. And and I told him, I said, look, this song has made a significant impact in my life. And I want you to know that. And now I'm singing it and I want to sing it for you. And so he sat there and he listened. He and his wife smiles on their face. It was awesome. It was an awesome experience. You know, a very nerve-wracking experience because, hey, this is a talented individual, gifted individual, and here I am, this lowly me, singing this song for him. And afterwards, after I sang it, he says, you know what? He says, let me tell you something about that song. And he says, that song right there is probably out of the hundreds that I have ever written. He says, that song right there is probably the one that is my song. My, 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 my uh, uh, um, you know, pinnacle song, is, is, that, that's it. And the reason is, he says, is because it is so simple and yet so profound and yet encompasses what God is about to you and to me. And I had that privilege of sharing it with him, and I want to share it with you as well just now.
some people say that he died one day, but that was long ago. Well, I'm sure that he was a very good man, but me, he did not know. And my friend, what I say is true, that he knew me, and he sure knew you, he knew you then, he knows you now, and he loves you. That to me, along with Dallas home, encompasses. He loved me then, and he loves me now. And that to me is amazing. And I hope that it's amazing to you. So my hope and my prayer is that today that I've increased your curiosity to experience that love for yourself. I want to invite you to pull out your connection card just now. And that's that yellow card that's there in your, in your, bio, in your uh, bulletin. <clears throat> if you need a connection card, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, we'd be glad to bring one to you. Um, I want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to fill out a connection card. We're so glad that when you take the opportunity to do so, um, <clears throat> But what we wanted you to do, again, raise it high. We've got our deacon standing by in case you need one. But uh, I want to ask that uh, you fill out the information there on the card. We would much appreciate that. Tell us whether you're a first or second time guest, a reg uh, regular attender, or a church member. If you are a first or second time guest, we want to say welcome. We're glad that you've chosen to worship with us here today. If you are looking for a church home, we want to say welcome home. We'd love to have you as part of our church family. And if there's anything that we can do to help you along that journey to make that a reality, let us know. Uh, fill out the rest of it, but I want to draw your attention to the back of the card. And on the back of the card, you'll notice that top box, and it says, my next step today is. Now, as I mentioned, <clears throat> I, um, I didn't get as far along in my message today that I had hoped. But um, so some of this, you know, we're going to unpack a little bit more next week. But uh, you'll notice there that, next, that top box, this is my next step today is to understand that Jesus is the very definition of love. And that's, that's uh, one thing that I really wanted to communicate, that He is love. He's the definition. It is Him. You want to know what love is? Look at Jesus. And if that's, your, if that's what you want to understand, you may not understand it at this point, and you know what? We may never fully understand it, but at the very least, if you want to desire to understand it, check that first box. The next line, my next step today is to take the most perfect model of love and pass it on to others, even those who hate us. That's something that's so difficult. You know what? We're going to talk about that a little bit more next week as well. And if that is your desire, check that second box. And if there's anything else that you might be interested in, feel check, check any one of those other boxes. If you have a question or a comment, 
feel free to write it in there and uh, we'd much appreciate that. Now is our time when we're gonna collect our offerings and so I wanna invite our deacons to come forward. And I'm gonna ask that you take that, that yellow card and that you drop it into the bags as they come by. But uh, we hope that along with that card that you drop in your tithes, your offerings as well. And this is the opportunity that we have to worship Him. We want to just give back to Him, demonstrate our love for Him by digging into our pockets and, and giving back to Him. And so I hope that that's uh, what we do that we give a great demonstration of our worship and that it is a sweet incense to Him. And uh, so what we're going to do is uh, just have our deacons collect and uh, may you give generously and give abundantly that God may just multiply that in the only way He can. So with that, why don't we bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father God, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to worship you and to demonstrate our love through this worship. And so I pray that God right now that you would honor this worship by taking these offerings, these tithes, and multiplying them in only the way that you can. And so God, we just surrender these offerings to you. Do with them as you will. And Lord, I pray that it ultimately furthers the work so that we may one day soon see you face to face just as Adam and you did. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. When I 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Just uh, a little commercial. The Abello family are gonna, is going to be doing uh, some music at camp meeting. They're going to be doing one of our mini concerts. So you don't want to miss them. So come and check them out once again. Jenica, hopefully maybe you and Richard, hopefully you guys will be a part of that as well. But uh, looking forward to that. So thank you guys for sharing here with the, the Milpitas family today. Why don't we all stand right now and let's close out with a word of prayer. Father God, we want to just pause here once again just to thank you. You are so good. You are so loving. And I know that words cannot fully express exactly what that love is like. But God, I want to experience it more. And I pray that each one here in this place will desire the same. So Lord, as we step out, Pray that we would go with your blessing. And that, Father, that we would experience your love like we've never experienced it before. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Maybe see.